Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Highlander Summit Signature Event, checking in with Bagel 197B. Had a great performance just last week uh, at their uh, signature event up at Lobster Bowl. And we're going to be taking a deep dive into a lot of the great stuff on this robot. Obviously, got to take a look at all the cool laser cutting of the Delrin they're doing as well, too. But a lot of other great things that go into this. Uh, their uh, corner mechanism has been looking really good. We just saw them in their first match. And all other great things to break down from their clamping, some of their sensors, tons of different sensors on this robot, too. So let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Andrew, let's start off on this robot, talk about your uh, intake on it. So walk me through just some of the design process for it and uh, how it's been working out so far. Yeah, so basically uh, we started with, um, we saw that we wanted to go with uh, hook design intake uh, as we saw that uh, it developed the most consistencies as well as uh, with our two stage of the flex wheels and going on to our uh, cut polycarbonate. When you were looking uh, at approaching Gamma here, so you were at Lobster Bowl last week yeah. as well too, right? Rule changes came out, that sort of thing. That, did that uh, modify how you were approaching your intake at all? Or uh, not much. We've really just stayed with like our dynamic uh, first stage with the flex wheels. Then we moved on to, again, you know, the hooks. We saw that the hooks were very consistent uh, throughout uh, our practices and also during the signature event. And then obviously uh, we have the flex wheels up here so that it can like bonk in into the uh, moguls. We'll be talking more about that soon too. Let's pass over to Gabby. You talk about uh, the corner clear. You know, when we were talking earlier, it's definitely something that you wanted to highlight on your bot as well too. So let's talk more about that and some of the other cool aspects on your bot. Um, I think the corner clear is very helpful because it just like allows us to clear the small stack of um, rings in the corner. It just allows us to get a lot more points and stack more onto the mobile goal, which um, can be powered by the back clamp. There's a goal guide, so the goal can go in and like be held in at any angle. And his um, Andrew's intake allows us to. Auto, like not automatically, but nicely score rings on the goals. Yeah, Leon, on, on this, uh, I want to hear more about the bucket system that you're running as well, too. Uh, and one of the things I know earlier, actually, I think somebody in Discord mentioned this earlier, too, is that you have uh, custom license plates as well. Oh, yeah. uh, and then also, I mean, the, all this custom Delbert is really cool on the bot. Yeah, so a lot of the time when Eric or somebody else on the team asks me to make something custom, it's usually just like simple simple things like these license plates or the license plate holders were they were both um, pretty easy to design but the only issue was just getting the right spec for the 3d printer because these dual colors um, are a bit of a hassle to do and i think another point to bring to light is the dunking system for our robot um it's really nice to have especially because uh when you're doing a, uh, autonomous, you have your alliance stakes, which are very important to score in, especially because that's like an extra three points. And so whenever I see my dunking system, I always reminded of how the Spider-Man and the Venom both uh, meme. So yeah, <laughs> anything, well, other than that, like a lot of these polycarbonate were laser cut and a lot of help was coming from our school's taxpayer dollars which came really handy when you need to buy a laser cutter just like this one. Well, earlier when we were talking bat strategy on your robot, uh, you mentioned that you're not really going too much for the wall stakes currently right now. Is that something that might evolve for your team over time, do you think? Honestly, for this robot specifically, I highly doubt it, just because of the amount of height it can reach. And every time that we tried to actually reach a wall stakes, I count it and it's about seven seconds, which is too long. Ideally, it's probably more like three seconds or four seconds that you can just like just go like that and it'll just be dumped in. And honestly, maybe next design for our robot will actually include wall stakes because that extra three points is really important. But you know, time will tell. 
But obviously, you had a great performance at Lobster Bowl, too. So a lot of great stuff to carry on into this event, which you see. Uh, let's pass over, by the way, start talking about uh, some different things in terms of like autonomous and uh, how you're approaching that. So uh, Eric, you know, one of the things when we talked earlier that you've really approved on your autonomous times from Lobster Bowl, shaved off some time with that as well. So I'd love to hear more about that and some of the different sensors that you're using and some of the code as well. Yeah, so at the Lobster Bowl, we actually, uh, I had this distance sensor here. And what this does is it detects the mobile goal we sit right in front of it. So this mobile goal uh, uses inches and then we, it dynamically calculates how long we, uh, how long it takes for it to clamp on the mobile goal. And then that's very consistent. It, we saw all throughout Lost Boy, it didn't really fail much. Um, and then uh, I'll talk about the PID. So uh, before at Lost Boy, we had a PID, but uh, I actually used velocity instead of voltage. So the difference between velocity and voltage is that the motors actually have its own personal PID, so it calculates uh, how much voltage it needs to get to that certain velocity. So by putting it into voltage itself, it doesn't need to do that extra calculation. So that's how I also sped up the, like the PID as well. So when you're looking at uh, from a time, walk me through what you had at Lobster Bowl, and then what do you have here, and how is that time differential worked out for you? Uh, so at Lobster, we actually have the same autonomous at Lobster Bowl. Uh, the only thing we really did was just improve the PID. So we really just fine-tuned it and. Uh, we made it like extra. Yeah. You have a few different sensors on this robot. I saw a couple uh, rotation sensors, the sensor, and then an IMU as well too, right? Yeah. They're using. Talk more about some of the locations, how it's working out for you. Okay, so our IMU is really squished down there. It's all the way down at the bottom, uh, and that just helps us with our turn PID so that we can turn effectively at at a certain angle. Uh, and uh, our rotation sensor here. This is for our arm. We really don't, we use it for an autonomous to score on a line stick. So what this does, it just goes up to your line stick height like that. And then uh, after, after just add in, we just like, uh, we just push the, we push the line stick down with the ring on it and it just goes onto the line stick. Um, and then we have this color sensor here, right here. Uh, and this detects if the ring is red or blue. And based on the team color that we are, red or blue, it will actually, uh, it will detect the ring and then it has a delay so that it will stop right at wait, sorry. It will stop right here so that way the ring actually doesn't get dunked it just gets thrown out the robot. No, I love that and, and definitely you know we've seen from match play uh, something that I think more teams need to implement on the robot as well too is figuring out how to get the correct colors on their uh, different mobile goals as well too. So Bagel, uh, first off congratulations on a great run at Lost Bowl last week. We can't wait to see how you do here as well too and thanks for taking time to tell us more about your team and robot. We wish you best of luck the entire way through and uh, great job so far. We really appreciate it. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.